Father, I just, uh, I just thank you, Lord, for every detail of what you're doing in this community, Lord, what you're doing through Forward Church, what you're doing through uh, all throughout the community, through many ministries, Lord, and the people who are committed to laying their life down and just letting you do what you do. Father, it's encouraging when I see people come into this building every Sunday, Lord, um, a little bit forward from where they were uh, when we met them, Lord, and I know that that's you doing the work, Lord. That has nothing to do with any of us, Lord, and I just thank you that... Um, that you're doing that in individual lives, Lord, and in this body as a whole. So we just acknowledge that you're the author of everything good in our life, Lord. You're the only active ingredient that makes anything good. And so I give you thanks and praise, Father, for who you are, that you're a living God who acts and moves in our life day by day by day, um, propelling us to want to move forward towards you because you're so darn good. So it's in Jesus' name I give you thanks and praise. Amen. Amen. Uh, any, God kind of threw a curveball on me, told me I'm not to use anything I prepared, but <laughs> I may refer to it. Uh, any, any business or any corporation or any organization, uh, it, it's driven by certain values, certain things that define what that is. We, you can be in Brazil and walk into a Starbucks with your eyes closed, and there's certain values that, that they are that define them that you would just know uh, it's a Starbucks. You can close your eyes and walk in there, and you would hear people talking about a venti or a grande, or <laughs> because they one of their values is originality. They don't say small, medium, large. They use other words. Uh, Chick Fil A, same type of deal. Like hospitality, you'll get greeted at the door. You know, co- companies and things like that are driven by certain values that define who they are. As a church, we will be driven by certain values that will define who we are. And so when people see these lived out in our life, they will say, that's a forward individual. That's a person who's gotten down with a path in this community that's different than the cultural norm. Uh, And so there are eight values that we have here as a church that will define and drive everything that we do as a family. Because this is the ground floor of Forward Church, it's a very unique opportunity where everybody in this room has a say of the direction that we take this, this movement. Um, so long as that say is defined by these values and is driven by the Holy Spirit. Everybody here is, is on even ground uh, and has a say in that process and being a part of the restoration that we're talking about in Slavic Village. And so it's a very unique opportunity. <clears throat> In our own lives, when we wake up every day, there are certain things that drive us as individuals. Uh, Some things that might drive us might be like family. We wake up and we want to take care of our family. Our love for our family is what drives us into our day. Uh, Unfortunately, for many uh, in our community, we're driven by things that just aren't good. They're just not uh, righteous things. And it drives us to a place where we don't want to be in life. Uh, We're driven by an addiction, let's say. I know addiction personally from my past. I remember waking up and the only thought on my mind is uh, the the first square that I'm going to smoke and i got to get to it, or the the first drink, or the first party, or the first uh, lustful pursuit, whatever it might be. I was driven by things that were not of God and that were jacked up. And, And all of us are heading somewhere. We're all moving forward. It's just a matter, are we moving forward in a godly direction to a place and a path that he has for our life, which is far better than the place where those things will drive us, you know what I'm saying? I drove forward wholeheartedly into a drug business that delivered me exactly what it could could do. Emptiness, brokenness, lostness, it took me right where it can take me. The things of the world simply cannot drive us to anything good at all. And so I think that everybody in this room is, is on a forward path towards God. Even if people don't know, even if, even if you're here just kind of as, you know, uh, just to have a good meal and just kind of hang out and commute. The fact that you're in this room, God has placed you on a forward path where you have an opportunity to no longer uh, reap the benefits of all the junk, the rotten fruit, I call it, of plugging into bad vines. You know what I'm saying? We're, we have a chance to radically change our, no matter where we're at. We can sit here right now as a drug addicted, angry, alcohol, whatever it might be in your life as an individual. We can hop on that forward path and say, yeah, you know what? Yesterday I was jacked up and I was plugging into anger and bitterness and jealousy and alcohol, whatever it might be. But today 
I'm making a baby step forward towards God because he's got me in this place for a reason. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing the word of God in a way that I can, I can grab onto it, and I'm going to grab onto it with everything that I got and just let, it, let him carry me because we can't do it on our own. Trust and believe. My whole life I tried to just clean it up. You know what I'm saying? Like when I got engaged, I said, you know what? I'm going to be a good man, and I'm just going to stop cheating on but I didn't have any Holy Spirit in me. I just had some giddy up, like, yeah, I'm going to do the right thing. And then beautiful women continued to be beautiful around me, and I had no Holy Spirit to empower me to be more of a man. Uh, I wanted so bad when my baby was born. I said, man, this is the time. I'm going to quit selling drugs. I'm going to uh, just live in the burbs and have a little happy life and not crave money all day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this right for my son but I didn't have anything in me that would actually empower me to be a better man. There is one active ingredient throughout all of history that has empowered people to move forward in their life and actually become better men, become better women, and that's Jesus Christ, period. I mean, that's just a historical fact. We can look throughout all of history and see hundreds upon millions of lives radically transformed the day that they stopped plugging into that dead vine of anger, jealousy, envy, pride, all that stuff, and plug into the vine of Jesus Christ. He said, and as a matter of fact, it's the verse that saved my life. When I read Jesus say, I am the vine, you're the branches. Apart from me, you can't do anything. But you plug into me, and I will produce fruit in your life. And man, people always say real talk. When I was growing up, people around me, real, real talk, man, real talk. They'll say, they'll say the fakest thing ever, and then follow it with real talk, man. <laughs> But in that moment, sitting on a prison bunk, I remember sitting there and being like, that is the realest thing I have ever heard anyone say, because I just spent 15 years of my life plugging my little branch of a life into relationships and getting that little rush that comes with it, immediate gratification, all that stuff, and then I'm withered up and dead, and there's no love, there's no real anything. Plugging my little branch of a life into money, and it's nice walking into place and buying stuff and all that, and then at the end of the day, you got stuff, and who cares? All these things, but just in that time when he had me on the same path that everyone is here on, when he put me on that path and I plugged into that book and started reading about this man who taught us how to walk in rhythm and find happiness, I felt something springing up that wasn't that temporary high. It was purpose. It was a reason for all this around us, and it was awesome. Uh, and so I began to wonder, like, what, what is that fruit that will be produced in my life? You know what I'm saying? And it ended up being the very things all my life I wanted to be, but just didn't have the heart or the guts or the, the, the power is really what it is to do it. Uh, if you have your Bibles on you, if you can turn to Galatians chapter 5. <clears throat> if anyone has the Bible that we give away, if you could say what uh, page that's on. I don't have it with me. Okay, chapter 5, and I'm going to start in verse 19. <clears throat> and this defined the fruit for me. When Jesus said, plug into me, I'll show you what it's all about, and I'll produce fruit in your life. Then I came to this verse about a month later. <laughs> it said, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, Outbursts of anger, selfishness, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild, wild parties, and other, stuff, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in your life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and crucified them. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. So when I plugged into the Lord, I mean, I was going, all of us are growing in something, right? Even if we plug into that vine, if we plug into anger, I could be an angry little kid who's just kind of angry on the playground. And I grow up, and that grows. That anger grows and grows and grows and grows to the point where now I'm an adult who's beating my wife or I'm an adult who's crazy driving, you know, uh, road rage and stuff like that. Anger will grow and grow and grow. There's not a person who I was locked up with who was in there for some rape or pedophilia who wasn't simply a 12-year-old kid who found a magazine under his daddy's bed. 
and lust, he plugged into it, and, and it became worse and worse and worse and worse. It grew in his life and grew in his life until we become something that we didn't plan on. I was just looking at this magazine or Daddy's bed. If we plug into these things, they will make us into something that scares even us. <clears throat> And so that when I plugged into the vine and I began to see those fruits uh, built up into my life, it was an amazing thing. It's a beautiful thing when, I, when you live your whole life in anger and you plug into it and suddenly, simply by trusting in this perfect Savior, you have the ability to be kind when you really should be angry. You know what I'm saying? When people come at you with, with just junk and the normal response is, Ugh. And you have the ability suddenly to say, you know what, I'm sorry, bro, if you feel that way, and da 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 And to actually do it, to actually live this thing out and to grow in those fruits of the Spirit. <clears throat> and I pray that if you're here, if you're in this building, it's because you've seen that those sorts of dead uh, fruits, can we switch them? Those sorts of dead fruits have left you in a place where it's like, dude, it's an empty vine. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. There's got to be more to life. There's got to be more uh, than just chasing after lustful pleasures and just letting, the, what, it, what grows out of that is dissatisfaction. I could have the most beautiful wife in the world, but if I have a lustful mind, it doesn't matter. It breeds dissatisfaction with what I have. If I plug into jealousy, it's the same thing. I will never be satisfied with what I have. The person next to me will always have what I really want. <clears throat> we're here, though, as a family, simply to help each other grow in Christ. Well, the reason we're called forward is that no matter where we're at, that today we make a commitment to press forward into seeing th these values, those fruits, grow up into our life. The positive fruits, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It's a beautiful thing when I could never control what I do. Sin ran my life. If it said to do it, I did it, flat out. If my body said, go get a drink, I was a slave. It, I did what it said, flat out. My entire, it's a beautiful thing when suddenly we have self-control to say, you know what? Nah, it's not what's best for me. It's just going to lead me to a place where I feel dead and empty. We will be defined by being a church that continuously focuses on growth. Something that's not growing is dead, flat out. That's a scientific fact. If it's not growing, it's dead. As an individual, I could be in Christ for 20 years, and if I can't look back six months and say, you know what? I'm a little kinder than I was six months ago. I'm a little more loving. I'm a little more joyful. I'm a little gentler in situations. I need to be growing or else I'm dead. My water's not being stirred. I'm just a dead Christian, stuck in dead religion. As a church, if we're not growing, we are dead. And I don't mean growing in, in terms of we need to have 500 people because we could very easily become a mile wide and an inch thick. That's never what we want, but as individuals, that we are all growing in Christ. We're growing in these things. We're becoming more patient, more kind. And we're all in a work in progress. I'm up here as a work in progress. And so specifically, I look at my life and say, a year ago, am I more kind, really, than I was a year ago? And if the answer is no, then I need to define what things in my life do I need to change. God put on my heart a little while ago a list of things, a forward list he, and basically told me, hey, bro, you're going to stand in front of people every week and kind of compel them to move forward in a godly direction. How are you moving forward? And he put this on my heart. Uh, yeah, this. And it's basically a forward life as he revealed it to me. Um, I took a vacation like three days in the woods. And he basically called me out on some stuff that was just a little bit shifty, you know what I'm saying, or that I wasn't really pursuing him in. Uh, Living out the values that I talk about in our home. In our house, we have all the values that our, our family stands for. Integrity, love, growth, a lot of stuff that we'll be going through here. Am I living those out personally every day, or am I just talking to the kids about it? Uh, a focus on health, because ever since when I came to Christ, one of the things that I struggled with was smoking. And it would be constantly this thing where when stressful situations would hit me, because of this rich past and addiction, nicotine would be right at the door like, hey, you want to relax for a second like you did back in the day? And so I need to focus on health and realize that this body has been given to me uh, and I need to focus on getting off it. 
all those things, an accountability relationship with another man where I'm completely honest, uh, a commitment to the schedule he's given me, not doing what I want to do when I want to do it, a steer from laziness, a commitment to honesty, and a focus on relationships and listening, especially with my wife. Because a lot of times, you know, <laughs> if, the, if your wife's around all the time, you have a tendency to, you know, you hear, but you don't necessarily listen, you know what I'm saying? And so anyway, he called me out, and all of us in this room, if we want to move forward with God, need to take a genuine look at ourselves and just say, hey, this is what it looks like for me to move forward. This is the step that I need to take in order to grow in my relationship. And we will be defined by a church that grows. Not this way. We have no, maybe the only church in America that has no intention of growing, period. We have an intention of multiplying and planting other churches. But if we get over 120 people, I can't know when Patty's car breaks down or when Susie's husband leaves her. I want to be intimately involved and be a real shepherd who hangs out with the sheep. Uh, and so we will multiply as a church. <clears throat> so, we, so we will multiply, but growth is not, this way is not what we're talking about. I'm talking about growth like this, where every person stands taller than they did last week and taller than they did last week. So a year from now, we are a family of people where people on the outside have to look at it and say, man, do you see what's going on with these people who were who used to be uh, angry and fighting, and now they're peaceful and loving. Uh, a whole community of people moving forward in one direction is, an, a, is a beautiful thing, and that's what we're going for. Each of these weeks, we're going to go through the values of what it is to be, a, to be forward church. Um, and I pray that anyone that you know that wants to join this family, no matter what we have to do to get them here, these are the weeks to do it, because we want to define who we are as a church and begin to move forward in a godly direction as a family, no matter where we're at. <clears throat> Father, I just thank you, Lord, for every detail of who you are, Lord. Every heart in this room, Lord, I pray that, that you would place on their heart, Lord, the things in their life that need to go. Sometimes, Lord, in order to grow, just like that analogy you gave us with the vine and the branches, branches need to be pruned in order to grow, Lord, and pruning is a painful process. If I'm a branch, that hurts, Lord. And so I just pray, Lord, that you would give us the courage and the strength to prune away the things that stand against what you have for our life, that you would uh, reveal to us every detail of the forward plan for us uh, moving towards you, Lord, whether that's here, no matter where that is, Lord, that we would all begin to move forward in our relationship with you, even if we've known you for years, that we would take an honest inventory of where we're at, see if our water is dead and still, and then shake it up, Lord, and, and move towards you uh, fervently, Lord. Every morning in your glory, you rise up and tell the story of a love that you are pouring even when we are coldly ignoring. May all these eyes that sit before me explore me, finding you there, so that they know that this is truth that I bear and you that they hear. Father, liquefy my heart that I might pour it on life's page. Each step I take is for your sake, and wherever I stand your stage. Pierce through the lies deceiving us, leaving us under the gun and lead us to believing and receiving the hope in your Son. Son, shine up in our hearts. Son, rise up in our souls. Son, set our gaze upon your ways. Let nothing break your hold. Hi, brothers and sisters. Two Sundays ago, somebody came over to the laundromat. I bet every Sunday to wash my clothes. I came that first Sunday that came over there, pastor to get back in touch with me. I came last Sunday. I got to get his testimony because I'm a folk number loser. I got four numbers. I have eight kids, four boys and four girls. I did drugs for 22 years. And I'm only saying this because I see some of my young people out here, and I don't want them to be, be going in the wrong direction that I am. My kids didn't go through the system. I had family to take them. But when I came home, I always promised my kids, I ain't gonna never go back. That fourth time, no, that third time, the second time, excuse me, y'all, I lost my dad in the penitentiary. That was my mama, my dad, and my best friend. The second time, the third time I went back, I lost my sister. The fourth time, I was home for my older sister. I came home, 
I had nothing. I lost my house January 11th. I lost my sister January 11th. I lost my house January 12th. I came home on, on parole. Hardest thing to ever do. I did it. I can say this. I took care of the drug things. I walked the streets. But the day I can say, I ended up getting my disability. When I came home two weeks ago, I got Section 8. Today, my kids call me mom. They don't call me the same. graduating out of pre-K, but I'm thinking she graduated out of 12th grade. Because her grandmama was there to do it. Thursday, I got this t-shirt from Pastor in the mail. And then he called me, he called me Thursday night. I can say this, I'm a fourth time loser, but when I left the penitentiary the fourth time from off Orange Street, I told y'all we never get near enough number from me. I ended up with two cars, a place over my head, my Section 8, my SSI. Now I'm in the process of moving from an upstairs to a single house next door to me. And my kids are all around me. I remember when my kids wouldn't even call me mom. They used to call me the crackhead they used to walk the street. Today, I can tell them, I was that crazy, but I ain't got to pay for the dope man's necklace, their cars, or, or pay for the lighting gas bill no more, because I pay my own. I, I say this because that young lady right there, when I stepped in here last Sunday, me and her sat over in the corner and talked, and I got to thinking. Why well, keep it built in when I can spread it out? I both me get baptized on the second. I got a 15-year-old son that I put in jail because he was unruly. He wanted to do what he wanted to do, so I told the judge to give 30 days. You young men, my son walking a straight line because them 30 days help him. And I got to tell you, if you do it again, 60 days. Do it again, that's your third strike. You're going to down for it until you're 21. Young ladies, I love looking at young ladies. I, you know, they're my sisters, they're my kids. I see them on the street if they're doing something wrong. Hey, young lady, don't do that. Because I know I got kids. But I don't do it out of harm, I do it out of love. Because that's the way I was raised. And I love all y'all. Thank you. Love you. This is bad. 
with the power of the will. Then he gave me this drink. Look at me. I don't have any shakes. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you, Sobriety Emotion, and, and still, Mars, thank you all of you. 